guys and welcome to one more Blade Ride video. Today we're gonna have a little preview of the game Arcana Magica, a new card game which just launched on Kickstarter. Arcana Magica is a competitive card and dice game where powerful magicians summon and activate ancient avatars to use their powers in battle. This is a game for 2 to 4 players, it takes about an hour of gameplay and it only needs these two decks, poker size and tarot size with their gorgeous illustrations and 5 symmetric dice. In Arcana Magica you're gonna be summoning units for your army in order to activate them and attack your opponents using the dice. Which dice you'll be using depends on the Roman symbols of the units activated and you want to capture your opponent's units as trophies and trigger Armageddon events for more points. Before I delve into the gameplay, let's have a closer look at the cards. They are based on the traditional tarot cards of two decks, the Major and Minor Arcana. The Minor deck holds 56 cards from Ace to King, divided into four suits and the two jokers. This is the Magic Points deck, which you're gonna use as points resource for all your actions. And we also have the Major Arcana. For the game, it's gonna be called the Unit deck, with 23 tarot cards, which are gonna be used as units for your army. To start playing the game, you first create the Shadow Gallery, which is something like a marketplace, with four cards from the top of the unit deck. Each player starts with four cards from the Magic Points deck in hand, and they can never exceed that number. And you also have the Fool's deck with the two jokers from the Magic Points deck. The game is played over several rounds. In each round, each player takes a turn in clockwise order, starting with the first player. In their turn, players can do any of the available four actions, but they have to follow a strict order, which is move, activate, summon, and or discard. In the start of the game, you won't have any units in your army, so you should start summoning. Players may spend magic points from their hands to summon a card from the Shadow Gallery at least equal to its value in Latin numbers. You can only summon one unit per turn and you can use the black cards for their full value. The red card's value is half down and you can combine both colors as well. So for example, to summon this card with value 8, I can use this black 3 and the remaining value of 5 I need, it can be given from the 6 and 4 together as they count as half their value. When you summon a unit, it goes to the last position in the army. The leftmost unit, the first position, is your leader. To change the position of your leader, you can use the move action at the start of a turn, which moves it to the very back of the row, leaving the second one as the new leader. Then we also have the activation with which players can attack an opponent's army. You may spend any number of magic points cards, just like in the summon action, and you can activate any number of units from your army. In the first four rounds of the game though, you have a die as a counter to help you keep the peace. Players cannot attack opponents who have less than three units in their army in the first four rounds. So how does the attack work? When you activate units from your army, you state which opponent will be attacked. You need to at least match the opponent leader's value with your damage. For the damage, you use the dice. Each Roman numeral on the units applies to a different die. A set of four arrows in total from all cards that you activate give you a four-sided die. The V, the Roman 5, gives you a six-sided die and the X symbol, the Roman 10, goes with a 12-sided die. Now, if you have two identical symbols, they upgrade a dice to a higher one. For example, if there is two X's or 10's in your activated units, you roll a 20-sided die. So in this case, I would roll an 8-sided die because I have two sets of four arrows, a 6-sided die for my V, the 5, and a d20 for my set of two X's. So I roll these three dice and I sum up the results. When your die result is the highest possible, your die explodes and offers you an extra result. So for my six in the six-sided die, I roll it again and I add it to the total so far. You can also use your cards to re-roll the results of the dice. If you use cards from two to five for the activation, you may re-roll a die of your choice once 
and an ace allows you to do two rerolls. When you have the final results, then it's time to deal the damage to your target opponent. The six, the 12 and the 20-sided dice deal melee damage and they damage the opponent's leader. The four and eight-sided dice deal ranged damage, so they can damage any other unit from the opponent's army. If the calculated sum of a damage result matches or exceeds the health of the attacked card, you capture it as a trophy. At the end of the game, your trophy's values will count towards your score. Your trophies may also be summoned as units instead of summoning a card from the Shadow Gallery. This is the resurrection and their price is double the value they have. And as a last action at the end of their turn, players may keep or discard any cards they have in hand. At the end of each round, you discard the card that was in the leftmost position, if any, you refill the gallery, you pass the first player token and players refill their hands back to four cards. If you want to change your entire hand before you start your turn, you may do so, but you have a 50% chance of succeeding. You discard your entire hand and you draw a card from the Fool's deck randomly. If you get the Red Joker, you may draw new cards, whereas if it's the Black Joker, you lose your turn. When a player is attacked and sustaining damage, but also has the Fool in their army, then they can use it by sacrificing it to negate all damage done. How to get the Fool card? Well, to summon it when it shows up in the gallery, you need to forfeit your whole turn and discard all your magic point cards. The end of the game is triggered when one of the four Armageddon events happens as shown in the Armageddon tokens. For example, this one is awarded to a player that manages to capture as trophy one of the four strongest units. The player gets this Armageddon token and the game end is triggered. That player throws the eight-sided die to see how many rounds are left in the game. At the end of each subsequent round, the die is decreased by one and also when another event occurs, you decrease the die once more and you give the corresponding token to the player who did it. At the end of the game, players count the summed value of their trophies. Each Armageddon token they have counts as 10 VP and they also add half of the value of their current army. The player with the most points wins. So this is Arcana Magica, simple idea but beautifully executed and it offers uh, fast-paced battles with lots of replayability. There are some optional rules you can add and four game modes you can try out that make the game more thematic and deep. So this was Arcana Magica, if you'd like to check out the Kickstarter campaign page of the game I'll have the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.